then I find myself on the phone and my heart is in pain. Then it's homesickness that's to kick it. Wait, 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 What's going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I'm a second year medical student studying at King's College London. And today I have a very special guest called... My name is Masitara, but of course you guys can call me Sean. <laughs> yeah. So Sean, sure, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, yeah, so you know, right? I am from Botswana. I am a second year medical student at the University of Central Lancashire. That's up in Preston. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly new university. It's been running for four years now. Um, and I'm an international student, mm -hmm. yeah. And for those of you who don't know where Botswana is, um, it is located in southern Africa, small population, but you know, we'll, we'll, put, a map, we'll put a map on the screen somewhere. Thank you, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> so, yeah, so Sean and I met in the University of Birmingham, uh, but we met uh, during biomedical science, which we both studied. And during first, the first time we met, yeah, actually, the first time we met, funnily enough, um was I arrived, I arrived late for a lab practical. And this was actually the moment where, and this is corny, but I knew that this was actually a good guy. Wow, I came late wow. for my lab practical and I didn't have a seat anywhere to sit. And the only people I knew were already sitting down and he stood up immediately and then offered me a stool which to some people may be a small thing but you know i thought that was quite kind well, good, considering well, everybody else was standing up who uh, came late so you know appreciate it man. i appreciate it of course man and yeah the first time i saw sean i think he was in the lectures as soon as i saw him i was like this guy is from africa <laughs> <I'm his journey." laughs> obviously i'm from africa as well you know i'm kenyan i'm kenyan of course um but here we are it's like five years later yeah and uh we're in king's college london well, i'm in king's college london right now we're in on campus and I'm going to be asking Sean a few questions about his time in medicine, how you got from Botswana uh, all the way to England, how you got from his A levels to medicine now after doing biomed. Uh, so yeah, you good? You ready? Yeah, I'm good to go. All right. So first question I have for Sean is, why did you choose to study in the UK? So why not Australia? Why not America? Why not anywhere else? Right. Um, so I decided to study in the UK specifically because of the. NHS. At the time, I didn't know it was called the NHS. I just knew there was free healthcare, and I was like, "Wow, I need to see how this works." So you know, I figured, okay, you know, it's the the education hub of the world. A lot of people come here to receive a really good education, yeah. um, which is also present in Australia and the US. But again, key factor was the free healthcare. I just needed to see how that was done, and mm -hmm. just wanted to see what you know how everything ran. Okay, fair play. That's a fair answer. And where did you apply for biomed and where did you apply for medicine? If you can remember. Okay, yeah. So my applications were a bit funny. Um, and bear in mind, I was young. I mean, okay, right, everybody's right. young, but with my applications, I was naive with my approach um, to the application process. Yeah. I didn't ask for a lot of help. I did a lot of the things that I was doing on my own. And because of it, I made my fair share of mistakes right right uh, so when i initially applied <laughs> i applied to cambridge mm -hmm. and i applied to aberdeen and bear in mind this is for medicine not okay. biomed so this was a very i didn't even know you applied for medicine i thought you yeah. applied for biomed straight up yeah i was very reckless okay. i was very reckless right. with that with my approach to the application process okay you know so i was aiming for the big unis oh, wait so, 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 did you, so did you apply for ucas or through the mail because i remember seeing some like letters yeah, you had yeah, i remember seeing some yeah. letters like addressed to cambridge <laughs> po box cambridge and i was like what was going on so, yeah that was the other thing so <laughs> I I thought, oh, let me double up my chances and apply through UCAS and apply through the post. So <laughs> I sent, and I had a huge, like, I don't even know how I can, like, it was like this thick. It had, like, my application. So I printed off the UCAS application again. I think I printed off, like, three passport copies, uh, <laughs> letters. I printed off my certificates, copies, certified copies. Yeah. Like, I went to the, like, police station and I certified all of the copies as oh well. My, gosh. my CD, birth certificate, CD, you know, CV, card. you know, I mean, you may as well, like, <laughs> at this rate. So, okay. you know, I just put everything in there, sent this huge piece of mail to Cambridge. And what I got back was, your package has been received and placed in your file. And <laughs> the next email that came after that was, was well, sorry, 
but I uh, was sorry to inform you that your application has been rejected. Wow, after all, um, that, all, that, after, after all that effort of after posting all that effort, stamps you know, and stuff, all that wow, financing man. and wow, you know, yeah, you know, bad things happen. Bad right. things happen. Well, just like for those who are applying as uh, internationals, you can't apply to the post. Yeah, you made that clear. It's all through you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may need to check the universities. Make sure that. You know, there's a you make sure that you understand the application process. Uh -huh. I understand for you, Clan, that you can actually apply directly to them, or yeah. rather, that was the case when I applied. Right, was right, that you right. could apply directly to them. So again, just focus on that university and just concentrate on getting that. Okay. Right. right. So okay. then, after making that mistake, I applied for medicine to Cambridge and Aberdeen. Um, before I actually got my rejections, something right. suddenly clicked in my head, and I realized that oh, actually this might be a very bad move mm -hmm. because in actual fact I had four options right, I had right. four options to apply for two different medical two different medical schools okay. and then I could have picked the fifth one as a um, backup right, if I okay. remember right mm -hmm. but instead I only used two of those to apply for medicine so I thought you know what let me apply for biomed mm -hmm. so I applied for biomed to Birmingham mm -hmm. and Edinburgh but why didn't you apply for all four for medicine and then one for biomed? Again, this was just me being very naive with my approach. I yeah. was mm. cocky for one thing, you know, I just thought, oh, my results will get me far and that's it. Mm. But, you know, this was also another learning curve. This was the point in which I learned that there was more to the application process than just right, my right. results. Because I thought, oh, my results were up to scratch. I can get in. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot more to it and a lot more effort that I needed to put in that I hadn't put in. Okay. So it was actually a good thing that it clicked. Mm -hmm. I should apply for Biomed to Birmingham and Edinburgh. Right, right. So yeah, so I ended up putting those two in last minute. And yeah, the rejections came in. They came in oh, nice man. and steady. Nice Ooh. and steady. Cambridge, came, well, Cambridge, of course, first off the bat, just oh, slapped me with that. Aberdeen as well, another one. Mm -hmm. um, and then Birmingham came along. And the interesting thing about Birmingham was that they didn't accept me straight away. Instead, mm -hmm. the I believe she's the admissions tutor. Yeah. Um, she emailed me. Mm -hmm. She emailed me and Wendy. No, Doctor Linda Lefevre. Linda. Okay. Yeah. So she emailed me and then said, "You know what? We can see that you're gear you've geared your application towards medicine. Mm -hmm. But could you explain to us why you think you'd actually be?" a good fit for biomed right, right, right. and i thought that was really kind of her because that was she didn't need to do that mm -hmm. she didn't need to do that but she gave me a chance yeah, and yeah, yeah. through her giving me that chance she actually gave me the best, she opened the doors for the next three years the mm -hmm. best three years of my life oh, that i no. can remember to be honest that's why i met kenji and richard the boys, the boys. You know? of course and yeah I got, I got i got an oh, i got an offer from Edinburgh, but for so some for reason, Biomed. yeah, for Biomed, but for some reason, I clicked better with Birmingham, so perfect. perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you chose it, man. Yeah, so I wouldn't mean, be here right now, of course. Okay, yeah. So, the next question is, yeah. what was the process of applying, <laughs> and can you speak about how it might be different from you know, for me applying as a hope student, right? So, the process, you know, like the visas, all of like everything from start to finish. So, the visa application, of course, you can only make that when you've gotten your acceptance letters. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there is there is a point in thinking about it because you want to make sure that your finances are arranged properly. Right, right. But um, primarily, you want to focus on getting your application dates down. Mm -hmm. Now, for myself, when I wrote my exams, I wrote them in October, November. Okay. So when I applied for um, my for university, mm -hmm. for university when I was in um, my A levels, right. it was okay, it was convenient for me because what I got were unconditional offers. Mm -hmm. But of course now when we applied as graduates, you're only getting conditional <laughs> offers because that was now um, pending on your um, on your results, on your final results. Okay. But you needed that confirmation of acceptance letter to apply for your visa. Okay. Yeah. So um, I would say just focus primarily on mm -hmm. getting through the application process first. Get the get the confirmation of acceptance letter, and then you can concentrate okay. on your visa letter. So, so first, focus on getting to medicine. Yeah. And then after that, focus on the whole visa situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, more specifically on the application process. Yeah. Now, as international students, you still need to you still need to prove yourself. Okay. Um, so one of the key things was the English was the English requirements. So you had IELTS. 
um, I, I said IELTS. I know that the other ones, TO, EFL, but I preferred IELTS. I feel like mm -hmm. that's a lot easier, it's more convenient okay. in terms of studying wise. You know, I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. And then now you have the general requirements that majority of mm -hmm. medical students have. You have BMAT, UK CAT, and of course, as graduates, you also have GAMSAT as an option, okay. depending on which university you want to go for. Right. I said UK CAT, I flopped that. <laughs> And then Actually, uh, <laughs> I, did. I, like, I didn't. I didn't do that great either. But. Yeah, and then I hopped it straight into my B mats, okay. and that was a lot better. I, okay. I did a lot better. Right. Fortunately, with UCLan, there wasn't that requirement. There wasn't a requirement um, for you to set any of the um, admissions tests. So that was. Okay. So that's uh, one good thing about UFAD is if you apply, there is no UK cap B mat. Yeah. So that's something you know people should consider if yeah. they want to apply yep. to medicine. Exactly. And it was also MMI, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. MMI, say, yeah, MMI yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that's still the case now. Of course, again, confirm with the website, you know, things change. Mm -hmm. It's a new university again. It's only been running for four years. Yeah, yeah. You know, things change rapidly within the university. Okay. So yeah, you know, confirm that. Right. But yeah, it was, yeah, that was really it. It was, I think the deepest, the deepest thing was studying for the BMATs during my, during my first year in during my first semester and third year. Mm -hmm. I think that was really the the point at which I felt yeah, a I lot of that. pressure. That was hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you're studying day in, day out, trying to check out dissertation mm -hmm. information, trying to get ready for your dissertation, which we did in second semester. Yeah. So yeah. you're trying to finish your lectures, mm -hmm. your lectures for the first semester and you're also trying to, you know, juggle, BMAT, yeah. juggle your BMAT and also yeah. juggle the applications and preparing for the MMIs as well. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, yeah, it but was if, in terms of the differences between your application and my application, yeah, apart from the IELTS, the English language tests, yeah, is there anything else that you found that was different? Yeah, I think this is the number one thing. The number of spaces that are available for international students oh, are completely is completely different with mm -hmm. local students. Okay, you know, so that's definitely one of the key factors I factored in this time around. Right, I right. had a huge table with the details of each university, mm -hmm. the number of spaces available which um what the academic requirements were mm. um and other factors that factors that i knew i was limited in but i knew the universities considered so it, mm. you know the number of hours of work experience for example i know yeah, yeah. i think it's either warwick mm. i think it might be warwick that considers the number of hours that you um that you mm. but that's safe for home students as well though, isn't it yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. true yeah mm. um for me it was for me it was also it was one of the learning curves i learned at, from the first time that i applied right was again like i told you i was naive when i applied mm -hmm. i didn't know that work experience mattered that much i didn't know volunteering weighed this much mm -hmm. in your application you know my in my school from back home we were just starting to get to grips with mm -hmm. extracurricular activities and the importance of them and how it shows how well-rounded you are yeah, yeah so you know that was definitely seeing coming here and coming to be biomed in birmingham and seeing that gap between yeah, myself yeah. and other students local students who were also aiming to apply for medicine mm -hmm. it really did show me how much work i had to put in yeah but yeah. instead of wallowing in self-pity and feeling like oh you know if only i knew this yeah you know, i thought you know what let me try and you know ask yeah. my friends for help get that advice, mm -hmm. try and get that work experience and then try mm -hmm. and match up to the same level that everybody else. Yeah, so I guess the difference like here is that in A levels and in college in general we get a lot of you know push from the careers team. We you know they will push us to get work yep. experience all the time. Yep. In year ten we have like a compulsory week or two with work experience. So that might have been you know one difference that you may not understand. Yeah, have. definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's definitely a thing. You know, yeah. I, I try to go back mm -hmm. home every now and again just to try and help as many people as i can to try and tell them what is important in the applications because again yeah, yeah. a lot of people focus on the, the studies on the academics yeah, yeah. which is excellent i'm not even saying toss that aside but mm -hmm. you need to expand how much you're taking in definitely, and definitely. that's definitely one of the key things that i learned yeah so apart from the you know the ielts english stuff yep. you said there's nothing else that might be different no i think that's that's well, it that's, it. that's really it okay. yeah Let's move on to the next question. This is a bit more personal, I guess. Okay. But, uh, what barriers did you have to overcome applying as an international? Okay, so obviously, like you know, yeah. me, like me and Richard, all my other friends, we were. I came to London, all the way up to Birmingham. Yep. So it's not far; it's two hours away. Yep. But as a as an international student, you know, what did you find difficult? 
Okay. Um, I definitely there was the cost, <laughs> the cost of going to mm. locations for the interviews. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that definitely does take a toll. You know, you get your normal stipend, the allowance. You know, because you have your visa requirements, so you're required to receive a certain amount. Mm. So that's definitely one of the factors that um, that definitely strained me at the time when I was applying. Okay. Um, the cost of the application, the cost of the tests. Everything slowly starts to add up, yeah. And then you also have to exactly, you know, you have the English test, you have to Mm. pay for the resources to actually revise with, you know. Mm. You can't study UK CAT just straight off of the normal material that's offered. Mm. You need to buy the UK CAT, I think it's 1000 questions, yeah, yeah, Yeah? Yeah. I think that's the book, yeah, Yeah. and IELTS, yeah, and the IELTS, of course, you know, yeah, for internationals, now you have the IELTS, um, the IELTS booklets (laughs) and the CDs. Yeah, so you know, the definitely the cost definitely did add up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um What about your first time like when you came from Botswana to your first degree in Berlin? What yeah. about then? Like what were the challenges? Because obviously some people watching this would be um either like the practice medicine the first time yeah. or even yeah. biomed or anything else. So as you know, coming from all the way from Botswana, yeah. Did you have any like difficulties you had to overcome? I think this is this is actually so for me this was the first time I had traveled abroad. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the only the only time I traveled abroad was really was from Botswana to South Africa, and yeah. yeah, I mean you'll see from the map like South Africa's like it's next door. It's not. Oh, it's not you much imagine, you imagine your first time so, in you your know, country is like exactly. The other side of the world, that's mad. You know, so this was the first time me taking a flight um, all the way to now the UK. This was yeah. my first time coming to the UK. Right. I did not know what was going on at all. <laughs> the roads were just doing this everywhere. <laughs> like my my country is flat, so yeah, like I like, can look across. Like, what's going on? You know exactly. <laughs> like I've seen road signs pointing like diagonally, and I'm like, I thought it was only up it was down, like, it was left, like, right. Like, like the Jetsons or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I thought things were just gonna take off. I was like, wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it was definitely like there was definitely that. Shock, like but I was shock in a way. yeah, yeah. It's, it's culture shock in a way. Mm. But I was definitely uh, I was happy. I was really happy when yeah. I came because I thought, wow, like I worked really hard to get to this point. I, you know, I'm here. Mm. I've made it. Um, so you know, I just you, it takes a while. All of that excitement sort of yeah. sits there. Mm. I think then a month in, this was at the point when I'd already met you know Kenji, Richard. Things started to settle down, and okay. then it's homesickness starts to kick in. Mm-hmm. That's when it really started to kick in, and then I find myself on the phone, mm-hmm. and my heart is in pain. My heart is in pain because yeah. you mean you leave your sisters, you leave your father, you leave your mother, you yeah. leave, you leave everything to come here. Yeah. Yeah. And while this is you getting the best education you possibly can, mm-hmm. you know it takes it takes a toll. It, it takes a toll because you have to separate yourself from home doesn't matter what's going on at home mm. it doesn't matter who's passed away you know you're in the middle of your studies and this is everything you've worked hard for and i'm not going to pretend like my like i have the heaviest burden i have friends who have their whole families depending on them mm. and you know they sacrifice everything to come here yeah, you yeah. know and just to see them you know working through all of that is definitely mm. And you can see, you can see it. It's not, it's not yeah, that easy, yeah, and yeah, I don't think yeah. it's a light decision to make. I guess it's something that I never really had as much. You know, my mom and my family were like two hours away, so I remember the first time my mom dropped me up. I was like, a tear in these shut my eye. Oh, then hearing your story must be such a like. Kid, no, it's it, it, it's painful for anyone to leave that family. Yeah, but still, that's mad. Yeah. You know, so you know, I it, it's definitely a big decision. It's what about now? Decision. Like, obviously, you, this is your fifth year of you. Yeah. Here. What about now? Do you think you're like you've gotten used to it, or did you, you know? I'll I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, you still you still feel it ever so slightly. I okay. don't think the feeling itself ever gets easier. Mm-hmm. Or rather maybe it's not the feeling itself is there but it just gets easier to move on with it. Okay. So it is still there, you still mm-hmm. do feel the pain and if you really do dig deep you can yeah. find it. So you can't get better like hiding it in your exactly. mind. Like, yeah. And you know, you build a family here. You know, I think that's the key thing is that, you know, whilst you're here, you're building your life professionally yeah, and, you know, you're taking advantage of every opportunity, you know, take the time to build, mm-hmm. you know, this, the friendship, you know, your diff- you know, just build that family for yourself, that support network to get definitely, you through the definitely. whole degree definitely. and that will yeah. be, you'll be fine. Because I, I remember Sean came to, to my place for Christmas, he came to, he went to Richard's place for Christmas, so oh, he, yeah. you know, he spent a lot of 
to hear from Michael Easter as well. Like, he spent a lot of time with us. Yeah. And, you know, our families have welcomed him. Um, and I'm sure his family will do the same when we go there. Of course. So I think, it, it, you know, I think you're right. I think it's definitely really important to have that. You know, it, makes, it, makes, yeah. it makes the journey a bit easier, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, you know, so honestly, like, I can't express how thankful I was. Like, it's only now when I graduated and I'm now going through the undergraduate experience again mm. that I'm realizing how lucky I was to find Richard and Kenji. Oh, you know, got and, you, got you. I mean, I, I shout out, shout out to Fumi, shout Ushna, out, shout, you, shout know, crew, man. Manid, you know, the whole crew, man. Yeah. Shout out to the whole crew. Now, I was lucky to find yeah, I, mean, I was people, lucky as well. I mean, we were all lucky. Like, I think all of us were really lucky to find each other. You know, so. yeah. Yeah, honestly. So yeah, like you know, just take the time to just appreciate the friends around you, and you know, just take advantage of that support. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 no, I'm crying. Crying. No, no, I'm crying, man. Man. I ain't crying, man. I ain't crying, man. I ain't crying, man. I'm a grown man, man. <laughs> no, I'm gonna cut. I'll cut out. I'll cut out. I'll cut out now. Just give me some tissues. <laughs> so, what tips or advice would you give to anyone applying as an international? I think definitely be methodical about the application. Okay. Don't just pick unis you like you know yeah. definitely i mean again this is a personal preference but i would yeah. recommend it to anyone you know when you sit down list out all the universities that you have and don't feel limited go you know take the extra mile i mean it might i mean it may seem biased to me coming from me yeah. but a university in the uk is still going to give you a UK degree, a UK medical mm. degree, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know, don't feel bad, you know, just because of the rankings in terms of your unis, you know, feel free to mm -hmm. really look across the board because different universities offer different opportunities. And, you know, for international application, for the international applicants, yeah. positions are very, you know, very few. So you know, you definitely take advantage of all those. Take advantage of all those, um, of all those opportunities, okay. and just take note of who you are. Take mm -hmm. note of what you need in your life. You're an international applicant, mm -hmm. right? You can go home to. You can go home to your family. So if you do have family here in the UK, mm -hmm. like aunts, definitely try and try and situate yourself in the position. Try and place yourself. In a in a situation where you can visit them more frequently if you okay. need that support for yourself, mm. but again, it's also based on your academic limitations, your non-academic limitations. Mm. So you know, arrange all of that according to what you feel you'll need best, right. and have a conversation with someone. Text someone who's already a, a med, uh, who's already mm. a medic at this yeah. point, and ask them what they find is the hardest thing. Mm. You know? Yeah. 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 And if you could go back in time to the 18-year-old Sean, you know, coming to the UK for the first time, applying to medicine, yep. but maybe more specific to your personal life, yeah. aside from medicine, what, yeah. what type of advice would you give him if he's coming to Cecil then to the UK? I would tell him to hold on to his long-distance relationship. <laughs> yeah. I would tell him to hold on to that. I was shout out, very... Shout out <laughs> yeah, shout out to Tatozi. Um, hey. Yeah, I've been in a long-distance relationship for about five years going on six years now mm -hmm. um it has the first year coming to the uk was yeah. rough it was rough mm -hmm. and because of that i ended up taking a break from the relationship uh, okay. an extended break from the relationship mm -hmm. um but you know that that's definitely one thing because you know, that's definitely one thing i would say to hold on to because she definitely did support me in getting to this mm -hmm. in getting to this point you know she yeah. was a piece of home that i always kept in contact with mm -hmm. my family are always there mm -hmm. they're always there um but they also have their lives to live they have work i have siblings that my parents need to take care of yeah. so we can be on the phone every single day yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. so yeah um the other bit is yeah honestly take the time to just absorb the culture that you're in mm -hmm. you know just enjoy being in the uk just try and you know, try and integrate yourself with the culture. I've enjoyed mm. getting to, you know, you know, getting to understand the lingo and the different dialects of English that exist <laughs> across London. the UK. London now, yeah. I did not believe they were speaking English, to be honest, <laughs> when I came here at first. Yeah. But honestly, it has been the most enriching experience I've ever I've ever had. And I would definitely encourage Sean to just do the same thing okay. again. Mm. 
Sorry, I'll make sure to send this video to Tosei. Hey, hey. Oh man, right, well, I've got plug you, bro. I've got plug you. Uh, maybe, you know, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might get some grown man gifts out of this video. Uh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of relates to the last question, right? Yeah. But what was the hardest thing about being an international student? And how did you overcome, overcome that? I, I felt, I'm going to be very honest here. Mm -hmm. I felt very insecure compared to UK students. Mm -hmm. I felt that they were on a completely different level. So yeah, I was very insecure at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I constantly compared myself to UK students because they were like, I in my head the way you know the way things had been arranged for me my experiences my personal mm -hmm. experiences I just thought UK students were like at the top. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like, the, those are the top dogs. So mm -hmm. I thought that's who I need to match yeah. to get yeah. to, to, you know, to have the opportunity to take yeah. advantage of the opportunities yeah. that were being placed yeah. before me. Then he met me and he realized so that's, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing at it. No, no, you made it worse. <laughs> you made it worse. <laughs> it was one hell of an experience actually mm -hmm. getting to know people here. And then you okay. actually talk to them and you understand where they went wrong on their applications. Then you start to see, oh, actually, you know, this is, um, this is, you know, UK students also have mm -hmm. their own battles with regards to, you know, the academics with regards right, to right. the non-academics with regards to the applications for medicine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really appreciated the fact that, oh, so it's not like we're on completely different levels. Not different worlds. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the thing that I appreciated about that experience was that it taught me how to identify gaps between myself and other people within my field mm -hmm. and how to close those gaps in a productive way so it, with the insecurity it was mm -hmm. in a very non-productive way i remember in second year mm -hmm. for example kenji will remember this again i i'm gonna come across as a cry baby i was in tears <laughs> again my confidence was at an all-time low hit the ground you know i did not believe i was worthy of applying for medicine Again, I, at this point, this was now when I was really seeing the gap between myself and everybody else. Yeah. You know, I just thought, wow, like, I am, I am doomed. Like, this may be my last degree. Hell, I may not even finish this degree. I may actually just get deported t today, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, yeah. you know, it was just, at some point, you know, I just, I just, lost it i just you know my again my confidence was just low i didn't know what i was doing but then you have the support network and it really kicked in and at this point it really really kicked in so i had these guys you know really screaming down my neck saying like look you know that people who believe that you are worthy enough to get to this point and you need to push past whatever barrier you're facing now because you owe it to them to prove them right. So it's bigger than just right. you, you know, it's bigger yeah. than just whatever problem you're going through now. When you look at the bigger picture, when you look at that person who you're gonna be in the future, it just transcends everything that you're going through now and you just you just outgrow that problem and yeah. you just find solutions to those problems. And instead of looking them looking at them as barriers, you look at them as opportunities for growth. Yeah, oh, man. I'm gonna end up crying here, man. We, hey, man. we came, we came, we came far, man. Out, man. Out, hey, man. We came far, man. Damn, bro. Oh, man. That was the biggest thing. <laughs> I talked about RNA sequencing. <laughs> I would, yo. I said you these these, these, oh, these, these yeah, questions. Yeah. I was like, bro, it's, it's, about to get, it's about to get motion right yeah, now. I, I didn't know it was going to get like this. I, 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 All right, your life is going on live show. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, every, what, everyone is going to watch this. Yeah, they're going to know. Hey, bro, they're going to know. Hey, bro, I've been crying day in, day out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. second last question I have for you. Right. Yeah. Right. Is, yeah. Did you ever get homesick? I can, you kind of mentioned that you did a bit. And do you have any tips for anyone out there who, you know, gets a bit homesick if, you know, as, a, as an international applicant? Yeah, I got homesick. Yeah. I definitely got homesick. Um, mm -hmm. But again, like I was saying, the support network, you know, you have your friends. I think, again, you just need to know who you are. You need to know who your friends are. You need to know what you want from life in order to build the social in order to build that support network that will work for you mm -hmm. so i know that these type of feelings hit me at you know odd times yeah. so i always like to know that 
my support network is available for me at those odd times. Mm. But I don't abuse it. I don't call, you know, Kenji at like one o'clock in the morning every mm. single day. Yeah, it's only yeah. when I really need it the most and I know that he will be there for me. But the same thing goes for Richard and everybody else that's in my life, you mm. know? The same, for, same for you as well, man. The amount of times I've called you, I think like one time I was going through some deep, some deep stuff. I called, maybe called Sean like twenty five times oh. in one day. <laughs> so it's not just, yeah, it's not just about us. Thing. You also had us down a lot, man. And uh, yeah, we appreciate that. And that's what, yeah, you know, that's, that's what we're here for. Of course, no, you know, and, and that's that's just you know the that's really the I think that's the life lesson here. Ask for what you can give. Yeah, ask for what exactly. you can give. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and just then ask for any that. questions that you could find on Google. You yeah, find also oh, Google. That's true. Don't be calling me up. Oh, uh, that's true. You can't be calling somebody up <laughs> at two a.m. Yeah. for an easy ads. Come on now. Like, I'm but um, I think no, that's really good. I think also like as a medic as well. I think um, I spoke about this in Tusi's video with her. You know, go, being a medic there's a lot of like death you see. There's a lot of the difficult stuff you go through. Oh yeah. And having friends who are not not just medics, but just having friends in general, like and family that can support you through those times. That's so so important. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something you can yeah. discuss. You, we, we all need a punching bag, you know. We all need a punching bag. Sometimes I call my friends and I'm like, it's gonna be a punching bag session, but I just I just need to then. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes having people that go through the same things as you, like I think last week as well, you and yeah. I had a conversation on the phone and I was like, you know, what are you what are you what are you finding hard about medicine? You know, and he'll tell me what he's finding hard. Oh yeah. I'll tell him about you know what I'm finding hard about medicine. Yeah. And having someone there who can listen to you. And not, not just offer you know, not necessarily offer any advice, but just listen to you just definitely helps. You know, I mean, definitely. being a medic is it's tough and when we become doctors it's going to be even more tough so. yeah and that's definitely it i mean like yeah. that i remember the one time i was getting really frustrated with the course in general it's not with regards to you mm. it's just medicine in general yeah. is when you start getting into the ethics and the law mm. surrounding it and the things that you can should and should not and the things that you know even when you're trying to help a patient the things that could be done to you as a as a doctor as well when you yeah, do yeah. qualify you know i just thought i was like wow i mean i'm i'm here trying to help and mm. all of this like i'm receiving all of this um all of this um, what do you call it? Leg legislation yeah, you know yeah, yeah. hitting me you know day in day out or for example reflections oh the whole band. The reflections <laughs> are just them ones Jeez. And you just want to revise a lecture and the yeah, reflections yeah. just... But hey, reflect guys, reflect. I'm not saying don't reflect, but wow, those, those are long. Yeah. The last question I have for you, you don't necessarily have to answer it, but what are your, plan, what are your plans <laughs> for the future? Plans for the future? Yeah. My plans are a bit vague at the minute. I'm, okay, context. Mm -hmm. I'm on a scholarship from my okay. government. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's called the Top Achiever Scholarship. Mm -hmm. The whole aim is to invest invest our value in our human resources rather than investing right, right. in buying you know new buildings or buying infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So trying to build you know the skill level of our of our people. So basically, the people who are on the scholarship, wherever they are, we are meant to be the factors that are going to be driving our our country forward and our mm. economy forward mm. um, and I'd like to be one of those factors that actually drives us forward mm. so really right now my aim I'm just trying to do the most that I can to absorb as much information to mm. you know take in as much information as I can to understand the healthcare system you know extremely well to the point where I can give back to people back home all right man i think we'll uh end it there yeah i think we've had enough tears enough tears yeah <laughs> it's too close man it's too close oh uh, yeah a bit invasive you know <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for coming on, coming on my channel man really appreciate awesome, that man. another story that you know the world can hear yeah um i don't know if you want me to plug your instagram and things like that yeah yeah, yeah, plug, yeah. Plug. also leave my email address I'm more than happy to sit down with anyone who wants to have a conversation about the application mm -hmm. or, you know, even in terms of personal stuff, I've had a conversation with somebody about long distance relationships. I'm mm -hmm. completely fine to have that conversation if mm -hmm. you want to. Appreciate and that. yeah, just email me, message me, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, I'm, I like it, I like it. Yeah. And I'm starting to do more of these things where I bring my friends onto the channel and I just have a chat. Yeah. I think like you, me, Richard, like all my other friends. Sometimes, I had Tusa, the last video I posted was Tusa, or the one she posted on her channel. We literally sat down like this yep. and had a conversation about a certain topic. 
Um, and I really enjoyed it actually. So if yeah. you guys have any suggestions about any sort of uh, topic you want, to, you want us to talk about, yeah. any suggestions of um, you know any videos we should make, any questions you have for Sean over here, yeah. let us know. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for coming on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Alright, peace. Jeez. Hey, man. It was bad one, it was bad one. Hey, it was mad still. Jeez. It was fine. Jeez. We did it, we did bro. it. <laughs> Damn, bro. Ain't easy, ain't easy, man. Hey, bro. <laughs> Do I want to watch that video? No, you're going to start crying again. Alright, so the key is just be yourself. Nah, bro, you're good, you're good. You're looking buff, you're looking buff. This guy said I'm looking buff.